Club coming into the ring. And I'm on my way up the aisle now, and the excitement is terrific. Right now, my whole body is tingling like can't stand still. I walked up and down in the dressing room for an hour. The announcer says the fight is for 15 rounds. And for a second, I wondered. I've never gone more than 10. All through these in introductions, Al Wild, my manager, is fussing over me in the corner. He keeps talking about little things. I guess he thinks it'll relax me. Do I want to rinse my mouth with water? No. Is the mouthpiece all right for you? Yes. Now remember how I told you to fight this guy. Yes. Knock him dead fast so we can start spending the money early. I come out to put the bull on Joe right away and get him in my kind of a fight. You belt me and I'll hit you right back. Doesn't take much to get Joe punching. He's taking the whole play away from me. at Warcraft's left hand. He doesn't pull it back. He throws it right where it comes from. Now Warcraft lands a right. Elbow should be by the hip line. That left hook pulls me off my feet. I come right back again and get close. That's training fight. Now look how Warcraft holds Marciano's gloves on the inside. But the referee... So the referee breaks him. And watch him walk right to him the way he did with Ezra Charles and throws the left hook. Boom. Beautiful. Perfect left hook. That's the way you should be taught to throw a left hook. Perfect. It scares me. Now I'm up. You have to go right after this guy. Fight him for your life. Walker needs to walk straight to Marciano in straight line. Don't circle him. Go right to him. Here I go again, asking for trouble. Joe has all the room he needs, and he's playing with me. He wants to sucker me into one big mistake. What happens? I 
don't think there's a thing in the world right now. Walker has to jab. He has to jab Rocky Marciano. This is the problem. That lazy jab got Walker to receive a right hand. It's actually a, uh, a left a left hand by uh, Marciano. Walcott has to stop swinging away. He has to take his time and he has to jab. It's the only thing he needs to do with Marciano right now. Yank him on his arms. Lean on him. It's got to wear him down. Trying to fight Marciano's fight. Cannot do that. He's a taller man. He shouldn't be trying to duck. Everything he's doing right now, he has to jab. Beautiful body punch by Marciano. Walcott seems like he's all arms. Ties me up like a package. I've never been in with a pro like this. Marciano, uh, Walcott, excuse me, should never be in this position. Beautiful hook off the ropes. That's what he should have done in the 13th round. I come out here feeling like I'm ready to take... Again, he shouldn't circle this man. He should go straight to Marciano and start with the jam. Jack part of my life. The line with Marciano to get set. He has to pop the jab. Get yourself out of trouble with a combination and go right back to the jab. Walcott's going a little here. He's 39 and I'm making him work. I'm taking a lot out of him. I know it. Right now, we should be jabbing. He's allowing Marciano to throw punches at will. Right here, the world just ended. I can't see. Some kind of sob got in my eyes. I'm blind. I can only see little snatches of Walcott. All I can do is get low and try to keep chasing him. But I'm having trouble seeing any part of him now. Again, he circles Marciano. He should go straight to Marciano with a jab. Brown, calm me down. But I still can't see. You have to pop the jab if you walk out. This is why Marciano's constantly walking in. Al Wild put it best in the corner. You can't see, he said. What does that matter? Punch to the body. You don't need no eyes for that. He's trying to time Marciano. And he can't. He's the older man. He has to pop the jab. My eyelids are so heavy, I can hardly keep them up. My eyes are killing me. They burn. I keep rubbing the glove over them to try and get the sting out. Nothing works. I'm blind. Now let's go to the last round. I'm ready. But Walcott isn't a bit easy. He's strong, dangerous, and cute. And oh, is he dangerous. Terrific hook to the belly. Never got hit like this in my life. He'll keep slipping punches and then tying me up. I never even heard of a guy this tough to fight. What do you do with him? Circles his man again. He, got, he has to go straight to Marciano the title. and meet him with a jab. Him now, you'll never get another chance again. Everything's blank. I'm just chasing Walcott like I'm an animal. You have to pop the jab. You don't let a man follow you that But way. he goes back too fast. Let me get to this guy. I'll kill him. Now, right now, Marciano is on him. Walcott, as soon as his back foot hits the ropes, he needs to lick him with a, with a hook. And that's why he got caught. He tried to meet him with a right hand. His hand is too far back. He has to meet him with a hook once his back foot hits the ropes. That's the bottom line. That's why Marciano was champion. 
Salute, scrap of boxing museum of the forgotten fistic of series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on the channel. Salute to Walker, salute to Marciano. 100 years of world championship In fights. slow motion. Let's look at this slow motion one more time once again. Look at Marci Look at Walcott's right foot. The back foot, as soon as his back hits the ropes, he has to hook. He throws the right hand. Marciano's already in motion. That's why Marciano has the belt. Fundamental mistake. And Walcott surprisingly made as a veteran. He goes upside down. He gets out. What's the best way to get But he's not going to make it. Never. I'm a winner. Edge is closer and closer to Joe. He can't go back anymore now. There's the greatest right hand I've ever thrown. The left hook catches him as he falls. Get to the corner as fast as you can. He's not gonna get up. You can see that. Lot, you just beat a terrific fighter. into the ring. Here's a shy guy and he wouldn't do this in public for anything. But this is different. We're two guys who grew up in the neighborhood, hitched down in New York together to take a shot at the rest of the world. And we've made it! Millions in the stands someplace. Look at all the people. Hey, I must be the champ. I haven't even realized it until now. The eye. Something I've forgotten all about them right here. When things go right for a fighter, you never remember the pain, and they sure went right for me this time. So Marciano and Walcott would fight once again. It ended in a first round knockout. And many thought that Walcott filled his pockets and went home. But this night was something else, 1952. Marciano became the world heavyweight champion. And that was it for Walcott. Walcott's been around since 1933 and He's seen it all, done it all. Here's a young up and coming kid, Rocky Marciano. But now become the world heavyweight champion. Shout out to both fighters. Marciano put the pressure on Walcott and Walcott made the fundamental mistake. Tried to meet a moving target with a straight right hand. He's back up against the wall. My dad taught me the correct way to do it. Shout out to these great fighters. Now, Ray Robinson became midway champion of the world. 
February 14th, 1951, when he defeated Jake LaMotta in the famous St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And he would go on his famous tour in Europe, living a life. But on the seventh fight on that tour, he would meet a young man by the name of Randy Turpin. And he would get a surprise of his life. Now, we went over that fight once before. Let's look at a couple of pictures of this fight between Randy Turpin and the great Ray Robinson, 1951. Now, we talked about the famous Harry Wiley Sr. This one, you know you got a good trainer. Actually, let me make that correction. This one, you know you have a great trainer. Ray Robinson was bleeding profusely over his eyes. And Dr. Nardi Otto would have a talk with Ruby Goldstein, who was the referee. New York's Polo Grounds. And he said to Ruby Goldstein, you go over and check out Ray, because if I go over there, I'm going to stop this fight. So Goldstein told Ray Robinson, Ray, they want me to stop this fight. And immediately, Harry Wiley Sr. jumped up. And he said, Ruby, for me, let him continue. If you can't get him out of there this next round, do what you have to do. Ruby Goldstein said, Harry, don't worry about it. I'll give the recommendation to the doctor. Because of the respect and reputation of Harry Wiley Sr., that fight was able to continue. It reminds me of Marvin Hagler and Thomas Hearns, third round. Nineteen eighty-five. Got a, a fight doctor by the name of Romeo, Doctor Romeo, and Richard Steele brought Hagler over to the ring. Doctor, Doctor Romeo, and immediately Doctor Romeo said, "It's not bothering his sight. Let it go." He never spoke to Hagler, but with so much money riding on that fight, Doctor Romeo didn't think he was going to see another fight like that again. There's no way he was going to miss that fight. So he let it continue. Whether the blood was gushing down his face or not, Marvin Hagler wouldn't took care of business. And that's exactly what Ray Robinson would do to Randy Turpin. Let's take a look at the scrapbook. Now this is one of the Ray Robinson scrapbooks that I have. I have a lot of articles of Ray Robinson. And this is him with Randy Turpin. And this book is 1,000, 2,000 front and back pages of information on, on Ray Robinson's fight with Randy Turpin and others. But I have five books like this, exactly like this, of Ray Robinson's entire career. Now, this happened in 51, and I'm setting this up because Ray Robinson would take on Joey Maxim in 1952. And you can see Ray Robinson eating cake and having a great time here with Randy Turpin. This is the cut that Ray Robinson would suffer in his battle with Turpin. Now, 
Now, I have so many articles of Ray Robinson. I have them in different languages. Different articles. Wednesday, June 25th, 1952. Ray Robinson suffers from heat exhaustion. Could not complete the fight. Referee Ray Miller would take the place of referee Ruby Goldstein. It was over 108 degrees heat. Tenth round. At New York Yankee Stadium, World Light Heavyweight Championship belt was on the line. Now, June 23rd, 1952, it was a rain delay. And it would push the fight up to June 25th, two days later. It was 47,968 spectators. Together, they grossed $421,696. They watched Robertson stagger along the ropes into a neutral corner as his handlers brought him back to his corner. Now Robinson was 31 years old, he stood 5 foot 11 inches, he weighed 157 pounds, he had a 72 and a half inch reach and had a record coming into that fight of 132 wins. Two losses, 87 astonishing knockouts. Joey Maxson was 30 years old, he stood 6 foot 1 inch, he weighed 173 pounds, he had a 71 and a half inch reach and he had a record coming into this fight of 78 wins, 18 losses, 21 knockouts. Now, the better fighter, obviously, was Ray Robinson. He had the better legs. He had the better handle. He had the better boxing ability and a better IQ. The issue was, it was so muggy because of the rain delay that it was mosquitoes flying all around. And it was just so hot. And it wasn't Ray's natural weight. And I explained to you in 51 when he lost to Turpin. He was in five different countries. He was living a sporting life. He would defeat Turpin in the polo grounds. But then he would move up and wait and face Maxim. And the potassium ran out of his body. That would be about it for Ray Robinson. Let's take a look at the fight between Ray Robinson, Joey Maxim. On the night of Wednesday, June 25th, 1952, New York's Yankee Stadium. The man to your right, consoling Ray Robinson, is Harry Wiley Sr. One of the greatest trainers in boxing history. Bar none. What he has done for fighters in this country, what he's done for black fighters in this country, is underappreciated. What he's done to fighters in this country, brought home five medals in the 1932 Olympic Games, two gold and three Bronze. That's incredible. An American wouldn't bring home another medal to 1952. 30 years later. With Floyd Patterson in the Helsinki Games, he was a middleweight. He would bring home a gold medal. Now, Sonny Liston will win the AAU heavyweight tournament over Ed Sanders. And that reminds me of Evander Holyfield when he made the Olympic box off. And he was the underdog. was over Ricky Womack. Womack was supposed to be the man that would bring home a gold medal for the 1984 Olympic team. 
Ed Sanders was supposed to be the man that would bring home a medal. And those Olympic tryouts. And he would lose to Sonny Liston in the AAU finals. But Harry Wiley Sr. would bring home five medals in 32. But he would train guys as far as Muhammad Ali in a Buster Mathis senior fight. He would pass away. What a loss to the boxing community. He would buy time for Ray Robinson at the Polo Grounds the year previous with Randy Turpin. He would speak to Ruby Goldstein. Give him another round, Ruby. Do it for me, please. And he had a chemistry with Ray Robinson. Not only a great trainer and a great fighter. Can collaborate with. Let's take a look at the fight between Joey Maxim and the great Ray Robinson. had to weigh in because the fight was postponed from its original date. Robinson, now Maxim on the scale. And chairman of the New York Boxing Commission, Robert Christenberry, and the fighters. The weights were Maxim 173 pounds, Robinson 157 and a half, a 15 and one half pound weight advantage for Although he's the middleweight champion of the world, he is here, the challenger. Everybody's very frisky at this stage of the bout, especially referee Ruby Goldstein. A little later on, we'll see him when he's not quite so lively. Robinson, too, is full of bounce here, throwing left and right hands and very busy. Look at the way Robinson ties up Maxim on the inside. Now, Robinson is working a little bit too hard. In this round, He's fighting him correctly, one, but a little Robinson too hard in this heat. clear advantage. Beautiful the way Robinson ties up Maxim on the inside. Ray never looked trimmer. Oh, beautiful hook on the inside. Seem to be in excellent shape at this he ties up Maxim box. once again. However, it was hot. Falls away. Real good, lively round, this one. You 
can see each of the layers. And those white trunks, the light heavyweight champion from Ohio, looks even bigger. And to have a bigger advantage over Robinson than the 